Hi, this is Jeff Landau of Inner Resources Publications, Inner Resources Counseling and Publications. Today, I am going to be reading a rant I started at around the January the, of, the, of this year, 2013, inspired by the uh, work of the His Holiness, the uh, Dalai Lama, on compassion. But uh, this is a slightly different take. Compassion and the psychopath. Empathy. The seed to compassion, a way of knowing, or a tool of the hunter. The psychopathic manipulating mind perverts all categories, concepts, and feeling states, alters the intended meaning, and turns it into a tool for a con or a slap on the back guffaw forever altering and confusing things even more. Compassion and empathy in the hands of such individuals is used to figure out the next step of someone they hunt or used to draw their target into a con in which they will soon lose it all. The bad guys use it, and the good guys use it too. I'm thinking the profilers and that well-known special FBI unit in Criminal Minds. And the actors. Let's not forget the actors. I bumped into an empathy-sympathy discussion by actors on WNET at 2 a.m. They were discussing the experience of empathizing with their character. Getting into them, to know them, and the problem of how to get to know an unlikable character. One of the speakers says they often can't do it directly, but have to go roundabout. I couldn't quite understand what they were saying. They showed an example of an unlikable character from a scene in Conviction with Hilary Swank, who was speaking to the woman who claimed she was raped. Outstanding. These actors, these tricksters, these magicians are definitely not what Martin Buber had in mind when he talked about becoming bound up in a relationship as another way of knowing the object. Yet, here is a situation in which I, the outsider, the audience, can learn much about the people being portrayed without having to actually know them directly, which in reality might ha take a heavy emotional toll or more, in the safety of the theater or in my own home. The actor channeling some core archetype or quality of the real person. The actor's character is, then, another example of the ego using empathy for a purpose to be the object to be portrayed, to be set off and compartmentalized within the total person of the actor, the character. The actor using this tool to know an object or some essential quality of reality and transmitting that knowing to others. This level of compartmentalization obliterates any pure intended use of empathy as a seed to compassion. Unless the actor's attempt at compartmentalization fails and the experience leaks into a more central component of the actor's personality, in which case the actor may need to be debriefed possibly at a spa.
I really enjoyed listening to Melissa George discuss her involvement with her characters. She likes to keep them a little longer after playing them on the set. In an interview on The Buzz, posted on Facebook on November 27th, 2012, so as an actor, you're able totally to separate out your character from your identity, is that right? Sometimes, and sometimes it's not easy to shake off. And now, in Hunted, sometimes you don't want to shrug it off, you want to live with it a little longer when you go home. They're a joy to play. Sam Hunter is somebody I actually miss because I'm on a break right now until season two. And let's keep in mind, we are talking here about a benevolent use of acting. These same skills could be and are used to lure the innocent and unsuspecting into horrific circumstances as frequently reported in criminal minds. Question. How close are we in the actor channeled vicarious experience to knowing the real deal? How authentic is this safe actor channeled experience I'm having? Like Arnold Schwarzenegger, am I really an agent on Mars? Or did I just pay for a trip? And does it matter? Well, does it matter? In End of Days, Arnold says, yes, it does matter. Satan wants to complete his marriage before midnight and bring about the end of days. Schwarzenegger is hiding the girl. Satan conjures up Arnold's dead wife and daughter. Once again, seeing his wife and feeling the longing and loss and seeing their brutal death, he's told by Satan that if he gives up the girl, he can have them back. But this isn't real, says Arnold. Does it matter? Sure it does. But says Satan, reality is not all that it's cracked up to be. Just pain and suffering. Give me the girl and you can have them. But know this, that it is not real does not matter to the psychopathic manipulating mind, and it does not matter to Freud's unconscious mind, nor the wish hidden in the Freudian dream. So, once again we are reminded of the idea that there is truth, and a true path, and a true meaning to things, or else what is this about and why bother? So then, life and consciousness and making the unconscious conscious, awareness becomes an intrusion into the psychopathic mind's embrace of the mechanistic laws of cause and effect. Mindfulness practice is one way, one big way to get there. It is the walking innocents who at some point find themselves moving towards truth, seeking panoramic awareness and the direct perception and apprehension of reality, or who find themselves surrendering to a spiritual path, to spiritual experience, to a love for God. Richard Alpert gave up his LSD method of experiencing the spiritual and found a guru. He wanted the real thing. He is and has been for quite a while now Ramdas. In Robert De Niro's Deer Hunter, we are taken for a real-life tantric ride 
from violence and murder to empathy in action, or possibly to the e even deeper human capacity, compassion. It is at the end, in that most powerful scene, the scene in which we see the hunter with the deer in his sights, poised to shoot, waiting and letting go, and letting the deer go, we see the deer look him in the eye and flit away. The trip from the scene in the beginning of the movie where they take the deer down, that big, beautiful, proud-looking animal, antlers and all, and the last scene is a journey through unspeakable violence and suffering and madness. No innocence here, none whatsoever. Common ground. Live and let live. Life is precious. For some of us, the trip here may be easier than others. But all I suspect are through pain and suffering and going in through and around madness. Some try to learn by imitating others who may have been there. The rabbi who scoots the roach through the window rather than stomping it. And the monks who dig up the worms and transplant them so they won't be trampled under the construction of an expanding monastery. Like the characters, like the actors and their character, writers of action fiction often create characters for whom empathy is just another ability that can be used by the ego for whatever purposes are needed. It is in fiction that empathy is used by the hunter to predict where the hunted will be next. In Lee Child, 61 Hours, our hero Reacher says, Think like him. Be him. He uses the gestalt therapy technique of taking any motion, any object or person in the real world or dream and asks the ego to allow a merger with it, to be it, to give it a voice, or like the Buddhist teacher Choygum Trungpa Rinpoche, teaching how to meditate, asking us to focus our attention on the breath, on the out-breath, Follow the outbreath. Be the outbreath. Reading Lee Child's 61 Hours, I was reminded that all of these qualities and abilities can serve the hunter, good guy, or predator. While stuck in South Dakota in a cold, cold, snowy blizzard, our hero, Reacher, reminds us that the way he tracks down a suspect is by using empathy. In reflecting on the childhood game of hide-and-seek, Reacher discusses his adult professional obligations as a seeker, a hunter, a hunter of people, of fugitives. He had learned that empathy was the key, understand their motives, their circumstances, their goals, their aims, their fears, their needs, think like them, see what they see, be them. He had gotten to the point where he could spend an hour with a case file, a second hour thinking a third with maps and phone books, and then predict pretty much the exact building the guy would be found in. In Barry Eisler's Inside Out, Larison, a former dark op CIA operative who faked his own death, has declared war on the U.S. by demanding 100 million for 92 CIA prisoner torture tapes. He's in a hotel room armed to the teeth and waiting. Larison had seen Hort get inside his enemies' minds and predict what they would do next. Inside out, Barry Eisler. Writers of action fiction clearly show in their fictional characters that empathy may be just another ability that can be used by the ego for whatever purposes are needed, often to track and hunt. All this while empathic psychologists teach authenticity 
and self-actualization and maturation and the rabbis and priests and monks teach empathy to the innocents, hoping that all will hear it and that their relentless presence, their existence, their chant will tone down the climate of hatred and our escalating charge at warp speed to the apocalypse. Or maybe their chant will just help get at least one of us onto a path of salvation, and with that and the power of enlightenment, there will be one more to emanate energy onto others and calm them all the uh, down. I know it helps me to know that they are out there. I know too that others are becoming aware of some of the things that I say. Not entirely spiritual, but close. A more inclusive view of the problem. Choigam Trungpa Rinpoche more than pointed to this issue in cutting through spiritual materialism. There were many assassination attempts on the Buddha by one of his followers. Buddha finally sent him to the worst of all hells, Avicii hell, the hell of incessant suffering after death without any chance of reprieve. I am not fully aware of all updates to this understanding I do know that there appears to be an evolution of this idea by Mahayana Buddhism or by the advocacy of the Bodhisattva to help all and by the stories and their inspiring challenge, the chant of those who refuse to accept personal enlightenment unless they bring all along with them, including those who have been condemned to hell, to empty hell of all those who suffer there, to leave no one behind. I will admit I waver. I think that not all are able to listen at the present time, in the short or the very long term, even if in some aspects of their lives they may do good deeds or may do so in the unknown future that they may be of another kind, may be missing a Buddha nature or a self or a human soul. I also find myself filled, just filled, by the message of those who will leave none behind. The inspiring hope-filled energy of those who include all of life, all living beings, all sentient beings in their mission to show us the way to relieve us all of our suffering and help us to be happy.